After 30 years, 15 countries, and 54 expeditions, the husband and wife team of Ellen Mosley Thompson and Lonnie Thompson have left an indelible mark in the field of ice core research. Let's find out how these pioneers of climate study got their start. Lonnie and I have shared the same laboratory, the same equipment, um, pretty much worked on addressing the same questions, I would say, for the first, say, five or six years of, uh, of our research program. All the research was being done in the polar regions, and it was uh, a crowded place. And it was during this, this time that I uh, got this idea of, well, well you know, there, there's a whole world out there and no one's looking at it except the polar regions. And could we go to a mountaintop and get a record? Lonnie decided that he wanted to turn his attention to the tropical glaciers, to the glaciers in the high mountains. And I decided that I would continue to head up the polar work. And this became uh, very important when our daughter was born back in 1976, that uh, we needed to have a parent there all the time. And since the polar expeditions are out of phase with the mountain expeditions, it worked out very well. Dividing up the world worked really well because my Antarctic work took place November, December, and January, and his high mountain tropical work was June, July, and August. When she would go off to an expedition, and I would uh, take care of our daughter, I'd go to the PTA and, 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 and all the social functions, and then likewise, when I'm out in the mountains, he would take care of that. It just worked out really well because always having a parent on duty was very important to us. You never know when you're raising a child. I always think raising a child is like a, a, a 20 year experiment and you don't know whether you're successful until the end. She's now 31 and we're very pleased with her. She's, uh, she, she's her own person and so we didn't have a, a major negative impact on, on her. I think part of the legacy for our research program is already in place, and that is the 7,000 meters of ice core. We didn't realize when we started collecting it how valuable that archive would become. But as we've gone back and we've mapped and observed the changes taking place, it's very clear that some of these glaciers, like Kilimanjaro ice fields, are going to disappear by 2020. And when they're gone, uh, so is frozen history. Paleoclimate histories, those long histories that we can extract from the ice cores, are literally melting before our eyes. We're preserving parts of these records for the future uh, because I believe this will be the only place that you will find ice from many of these tropical mountaintops. Our hope is that there will be a new cadre of young scientists asking questions that will be as critical to ask as the questions that we asked 30 years ago. In the future, there'll be smarter young people coming along, there will be better techniques developed, but you gotta have a sample to work on. So that's our hope, that these ice cores will still be there 20 and 30 years from now, that there will be creative young people who have the vision and the curiosity to ask the important questions. What I see is high-tech jobs for young people as we come to grips with the fact that we have to change, we have to find new solutions. We're talking about new job opportunities, alternative technologies, the wind, the solar, fuel cells. We're gonna have to motivate millions of people to be the best that they can be in tackling this particular problem. There's not a silver bullet for the future, I think there's a lot of silver buckshot. Yeah.